Good morning. <laughs> the message this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Richard Peterson. In the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously taught St. Justin the martyr, the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, grant us through his intercession that, having rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. On the night of Pentecost, after I had buried the dead, I, Tobit, went into my courtyard to sleep next to the courtyard wall. My face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know there were birds perched on the wall above me till their warm dropping settled in my eyes, causing cataracts. I went to see some doctors for a cure, but the more they anointed my eyes with various salves, the worse the cataracts became until I could see no more. For four years I was deprived of eyesight, and all my kinsmen were grieved at my condition. Ahakar, however, took care of me for two years until he left for Emmaus. At that time, my wife Anna worked for hire at weaving cloth, the, work, the kind of work women do. When she sent back the goods to their owners, they would pay her. Late in winter, on the seventh of Deatus, she finished the cloth and sent it back to the owners. They paid her the full salary and also gave her a young goat for the table. On entering my house, the goat began to bleat. I called to my wife and said, where did this goat come from? Perhaps it was stolen. Give it back to its owners. We have no right to eat stolen food. She said to me, it was given to me as a bonus over and above my wages. Yet I would not believe her and told her to give it back to its owners. I became very angry with her over this. So she retorted, where are your charitable deeds now? Where are your virtuous acts? See, your true character is finally showing itself. The word of the Lord. Praise Praise God. God. <clears throat> the heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. <clears throat> Blessed the man who fears the Lord who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. The heart of the just man is firm, trusting in the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His corn shall be exalted in glory. The heart of the just man is firm, trusting in the Lord. Glory to the Lord. 
So Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him and said to him, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this tax is the census tax, that's what they called it. There were regular taxes that were paid, they go through like Matthew, the tax collector, and some other tax collectors who were Jews collecting money for the Romans. But the Jews were such a rebellious people, they ordered another census tax given directly by the people to Caesar. And that's what they rebelled about. They didn't want that some of the Jews even got up and says, we gotta fight this, this is slavery and all these things. And so, they, at the time when Jesus came, it was a big topic of debate because there was the tax and nobody likes that. So, when they asked him, do this is not legal for us? And he says, yes, the people would jump on him because the people hated the tax. He says, no, and they could turn over to the authorities. So, now there he is. So, Jesus is knows that he's testing so but he's asking another question, show me one of those uh, coins which you use. The thing is, they reached into the pockets and pulled out a denarius, which is the census tax, that means the Pharisees and the scribes had a census tax money in their pocket that means they were collaborating with Rome. See, Jesus is very smart, he just turns the whole thing around all of a sudden says, show me the thing. They show him and says, ah, now you are connected with them. But you know the rest. Give to God what belongs to God. So each thing which you look around belongs to someone. Doesn't matter what it is, there's something that belongs to someone. And uh, the days are over when you just went into the forest and just chopped yourself a deer and brought it home. Uh, these days are over. We have belonging to someone. So now we have possessions at home. We can say the children are ours because we made them. The spouse is mine because, well, we have entered into a bond. Everything and every person belongs to someone. So, we have today someone who is Saint called Saint Justin the Martyr. He was born about the year 100. So, Saint John the Evangelist was still alive and he was still preaching. But by the time uh, he was old enough to understand, well, Saint John was already dead by that time. He was an interesting character, St. Justin. He grew up in the northern part in the Samaria area, but his parents and grandparents came from Greece, so they had a Greek influence there. And they were pagans. They were worshiping different various gods. But little Justin was a little different. Ever since he was young, he wanted to know the truth and wanted to know God. Because he was in search for God, because he saw these various gods being worshiped. And who is the real God, you know? So that's where his uh, things quite started. So he hired himself out to one of those stoic, because there were various schools in those days. One was a stoic school. You show no emotions and no feelings, and everything's just reason and you, it doesn't matter. So he went to them, but after a while he realized they can't really show me who God is because they don't know. So he went away and went to another fellow who was very well known. And uh, after the second day, he says, you know, I deign like to lower myself to your standard to teach you, so how much is pay going to be? Well, he left them again. Then there were the Pythagoreans, the uh, geometric kind of guys, you know, and they, they were looking for numbers and figures and that kind of thing. So he went with them for a while, but uh, they said, no, you 
you have to study first music and numbers and figures and astrology, astronomy, and all these things before we can teach you, really. He left them. He found a school that was teaching Plato. Plato is known to us because St. Dustin followed the teachings of Plato. You know, there's this one God up there in heaven and we belong to him and all these things. And there is images of God down here on earth. And so we never can know the true real thing because the true real things are in heaven. Well, uh, that's Platonism. St. Augustine took it and really he brought a good start for Christianity, for the spiritual life. And St. Aristotle, uh, St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas took Aristotle and he built upon that. So this is where our religion comes from, our faith, our strong knowing faith. So anyway, he went to the Platonists and after a while he came to realize, you know, <clears throat> that's really they don't know either. So he was all frustrated because time was going on, he was getting older and nobody could show him the truth about God. So one day he was walking along the beach in a deserted stretch and all of a sudden he heard something and he looked around was this elderly gentleman, you know, walking and all the cane and barefoot and looked like a poor fellow, but says, what are you doing out here in this godforsaken area? Well, the man said, I'm looking for my, my friends, they're supposed to come back and they're going to go and say hello, so they say, I see them. So they start walking and talking, and the young man had known to the old one that he was in quest of God, in quest of truth. He says, oh gee, you've been searching all the wrong places, he says. Truth is found in the prophets, you know. You just go to find some of those scriptures which they have, and look into the scriptures, and find the prophets, and then find about Jesus Christ and what he has done. So he started to introduce him to Christianity. And so this stuck with him, and as soon as he went back, he started to surge up, and he traveled all different places, ended up in Rome, and because he was so into looking and holding on to the truth, he became a full-fledged Catholic, full-fledged Christian. There he was. He was so much in love with the truth of God that he opened up a school, a school of truth, <laughs> a school of Christianity. And there he taught until the authorities found out and Christianity wasn't very well looked upon, so they killed him. But anyway, he is a very important fellow because he's one of the first fathers of the church and we looked at him because he was an apologist. He didn't apologize, I'm sorry, I'm a coward. As this apologist means, you stand up for the truth and you're able to defend the truth, which each of us ought to be through confirmation. So there he was defending the truth and spreading it through the faith. He helped people to find to whom they belong. We don't belong to ourselves. We have a choice whom we can call our master, either God or Satan. And this is where we started off with from the beginning. Everything and every person belongs to someone, but ultimately everything belongs to God. So if we have an open heart, an open mind, start to search for the truth, really. We start reading the fathers of the church, and especially St. Justin and Martyr. We all of a sudden come to see where truth is. And then I have to make a decision. Will I adhere to the truth or not? That makes you a Catholic. <laughs> Holding on to the truth and knowing about it is not, doesn't make you Catholic. Holding on and living it and standing up for the truth, that's what makes you a Catholic. For that you have been given the Holy Spirit as a guard. You have been given the Lord Jesus Christ, His blood to fortify and strengthen you. Everything has been given to us because the Son of God came to, so He can possess the Lord when He comes to us in Holy Communion or through the sacraments. But ultimately, as we start to possess the Lord, we are being possessed by Him who is our Lord. So when we die, the only difference from between now and then is that we can see the Lord right now. We have that faith that helps us see. Then we, but we can see, and then we will see as He is to be seen. Father Almighty, praise and thanks to you in this beautiful day. We ask for blessings upon our country. Be merciful and kind. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are seeking the truth and have not found Jesus Christ. Lead them to Him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who teach Catholic truth that they will be Catholic truth only, not a mixture of all kinds of other thoughts and religions. We pray 
praise of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And any petitions you have today. With these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we do love you. And we want to be yours, not just in mind, but heart, mind, body, and soul. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries which St. Justin strenuously defended through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Justin, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without envy or claim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we meet the strife and enter into the battle, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of 
was an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, you blessed apostles and martyrs, and Justin and Martyr, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope Benedict XVI, our Pope Emeritus, found our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all of our pleasing to their passing from this life, and admittance to your kingdom. May we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said, Your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified.
Refresh my heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin the Martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gift we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. God, Father, Son, and Spirit, come upon and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, the Eternalist in battle, the Archangel, the Archangel, the Archangel, the Archangel, the
this pause now to silently present our own petitions to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. We thank you, Lord, and Mary, our Mother. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the Church. We thank you, Lord, and Mary, our Mother. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. We thank you, Lord, and Mary, our Mother. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother of Perpetual Help for our own favors received. <clears throat> Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Pray for us. Virgin most prudent. Pray for us. Virgin most venerable. Pray for 
us, Virgin most renowned. Pray for us, Virgin most powerful. Pray for us, Virgin most merciful. Pray for us, Virgin most faithful. Pray for us, Mirror of justice. Pray for us, Seed of wisdom. Pray for us, Cause of our joy. Pray for us, Spiritual vessel. Pray for us, Vessel of honor. Pray for us, Singular vessel of devotion. Pray for us, Mystical robes. Pray for us, Tower of David. Pray for us, Tower of ivory. Pray for us, House of gold. Pray for us, Back of the covenant. Pray for us, Gate of heaven. Pray for us, Morning star. Pray for us, Health of the sick. Pray for us, Refuge of sinners. Pray for us, Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us, Help of Christians. Pray for us, Queen of angels. Pray for us, Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us, Queen of prophets. Pray for us, Queen of apostles. Pray for us, Queen of martyrs. Pray for us, Queen of confessors. Pray for us, Queen of virgins. Pray for us, Queen of all saints. Pray for us, Queen conceived without original sin. Pray for us, Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us, Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us, Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Spirit of the Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Praise the Spirit of the Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Who of forth we beseech you, Lord, your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of Christ your Son by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through the same Christ of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.